So today on the Dig Podcast, I am speaking to my friend, Sarah Thompson. Sarah is the other half of Ted and Stitch and her business story is nothing short of inspirational. She always had that dream and put it aside to bring her beautiful boys into the world. And then once she was ready, she pushed forward and now has such a hugely successful business. And she tells us all about how that has happened, the magic behind it all, how she uses collaborations to grow both online and ultimately her her sales, which is, you know, what it boils down to, you know, having the money to provide things for her family. She talks about family life and how she juggles it and how, you know, it's not easy all the time, but she makes it work the best way she can. I know you're going to love this podcast so much. I can't wait for you to listen. Welcome to the Dig Podcast. I am your host, Caroline O'Neill, and I love to discuss all things online marketing, managing money, collaborations, making that killer pitch and developing that product that will make millions, as well as so many other topics that will inspire you in your business. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of The Dig Podcast. It's my absolute privilege to speak to thousands of you each week. Remember, I love to know when you've listened, so screenshot the episode and post on social, tagging me on Dig for Success and Dig Mama, and I will reshare with my audience. I'd also love if you could leave a review for the Dig podcast on whatever your favorite platform is, Apple, Spotify, or YouTube. I love to see all your reviews. So thank you for coming, Sarah. That was so lovely. Thank you so much. You're like, is she talking about me? <laughs> me? <laughs> oh, it's so lovely. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me to oh, oh my share goodness. our journey. Well, I when I think about people that want to come on the podcast or that who I would love to have on the podcast, I think, right, what are they going to be able to teach or educate the business community on? And I just think your story is so inspirational for all the reasons I said at the start, but for lots more, and we'll talk about all that. But I sort of give you a wee introduction, but you tell everybody that's listening your story, like, how did Ted and, how have you got to be here? It's been a long way, right? A long journey. It's been a long journey, but an amazing one, not an easy one, but we're where we want to be right now. So I, if we take it right back, I could tell you from the very start, but we'll not go completely all into it. But I left university and straight away started a family. I always thought I'd wanted a career, but wow, when you become a mummy, you, you drop the whole career woman thing. Well, I know I couldn't, I couldn't do both. And so we had our first little boy and I stayed at home and I always felt like I needed a little bit more. But then we had our second child and I still felt a bit lost. You know, when's my career going to come? When's my time going to be? But unfortunately, at nine months old, our little boy, Nathaniel, he got diagnosed with cancer. So we were thrown from our world into this completely new world that we knew nothing about. Everything was just constantly testing. It was hard, but we got through it. And a year later, Nathaniel went into remission and he is amazing now. But from that, you think when you come through something awful and you know you get those words, you know you've got through this, that you'll be happy. We just weren't, we just couldn't be happy. There was just, everything just seemed so hard. My husband was depressed, I was depressed. We were financially just in an awful situation. And I thought, how are we gonna get ourselves out of this? And it's something that I say to everybody, it was only us that could get us out of it. And Paul, he said to me, he was like, you need a hobby, you need something for you. You've always wanted a career. You've always wanted to do something. I think you should go with your embroidery machine. I was dying to get an embroidery machine because I wanted to make Nathaniel clothes that say, I'm brave on it, I'm strong. I just wanted something that I could make and put on him and say, I done that and he is that. So he borrowed £700 from his mum to buy our first embroidery machine and it just, it went from there. Other mummies asked me to make things and I thought, is this it? If I work hard at this, you know, could I get us to a better place? And I didn't know this, even though we're very good friends, but I didn't know that he had £700 and bought the machine and then just all took off from there. So yeah. from small beginnings to not to underestimate the value of 700 but I mean, in the grand scale of things to start your business with that and for it to grow at such a rapid rate. So talk to us about the growth of your business in such a short space of time. Like there's so many business people listening like, oh my God, I've been trudging this hamster wheel for 10 years now and can't get that. How do you, what's happened? How did that happen? What's been the process? So we borrowed 700 pounds from Paul's mum. I don't think we even paid her back. <laughs> no, <laughs> she's not listening to me like, I, I want we that back. Paid her back. But um, yeah, so I just was putting up things on Instagram that I was making for the boys and other people were contacting me going, can I have one? Can you make one for me? And 
it just started to get bigger and bigger and I had this little notebook and I was writing in it all the orders and you know, there was pages and pages of orders and I thought well, I think, I think you could maybe do this with me. I think I should go to the council. So I went to the council and we made a business plan. And just to, to how humble our beginnings were, when I went to the girl in the council, I said to her, well, she actually asked me, what, what do you want from this? And I was like, oh, if I could make £70 a week for some groceries, you know, £70 a week would be lovely. Anything more would be a bonus. She looked at me and she was like, no, 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 this is a big business you have here. You can actually, you could make this huge. And I was like, I could. So we went away, Paul and I started working, we grafted. When I say, you know, not a nine to five, it was not a nine to five. I went onto social media, I posted, we done photography, we've done everything, everything that everybody says you need to do to start your business. I was there trying to, to make it happen. I wasn't scared to reach out and ask people. I asked for help. I searched for people. And yeah, we just... And Paul left his job too, isn't that right? Or Paul started joining the team with you then very soon after? So very soon after I entered a competition with um, Digital24 uh -huh. and I won an independent panel, picked Ted and Stitch and I was like, this is what we have been waiting for. I was like, if we had this marketing experience behind us, Paul, you could take the risk. We could do this. We could be in business together. And it was everything we wanted because we'd been so, we'd relied on each other so much through Nathaniel's treatment. And then all of a sudden, Paul had to go back to work. I didn't know where I was, but together we just knew that we always were a good team. And when we had something to do, we could just take it on together and it would be amazing. And so from then, with the help of Digital24, we just went, it was going great, but it just skyrocketed from then. So what you talked about social media there and at the very start you took that on board yourself to start posting and do you see that was definitely like the launch of your business as such once you started to do that in social that that's where all the extra orders came from? Yeah I think it was so I was kind of doing it on my own personal page and I was like gosh I need to make a business page here but it was so scary it's one thing I say to everybody you have to you can't say I'm going to do it I might do it I might do it yeah I'm going to do that you have to just do it. One day I just had to just do, no, what am I waiting for? I'm going to do it. So I launched the Instagram page and instantly we were getting, you know, loads of likes and follows. And from there, that was what, it, it just went crazy. I think we had like 3,000 likes in two weeks. And I thought, how is this happening? And the orders were just flying in. Which is the most important thing. Like sometimes people get all caught up in the numbers and you're like, no, really, did that turn into orders? If it did, that was good. If it didn't, then you need to change it around somewhat to turn it into orders. So to get that so quickly, there's going to be a lot of people listening and very envious. But you said you did everything you could. Photography, staying up late, reaching out to people, not afraid that all those things are needed, aren't they really? At the very start, especially. I have to say it wasn't easy. No. I was. Do you know what? If someone says, oh, but I'm doing it, I'm posting... A picture per day and I'm, I was posting, 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 replying, making relationships and it wasn't to actually sell a product. I was doing it because I loved it. I loved what we were doing. I loved that I was able to make things. I Everybody that came to me, you know, could you make such and such? Me? You'd like me to do that because and that was what really was was the drive behind it. It wasn't ever financial or as much as we really needed that back then. I was doing it because I had went from being at the bottom to somebody who felt like they actually had a purpose and these people were interacting with me, I wanted to interact back. It was just all about relationship building. So it wasn't just orders, orders, orders. There was so much in behind it. Like everybody that was coming to us, I felt were, as soon as they came to us once and they felt like they were my friend because they were believing in us. Most of them are because you're the type of person that's just shining through now whenever you're speaking, very endearing. You want to be, you want to be your friends. I'm so glad I'm your friend. But, but when I, when you're talking like this, I can see how this next part has evolved, which I'm thinking the whole podcast kind of revolves around collaboration. Uh, who wouldn't, what business wouldn't want to collaborate with such a positive force? But what is, what has collaboration meant for your business? First of all, what does it mean to you? And then how has that helped and what way does it work in your business? Yeah, so I know for a lot of businesses it can look completely different. You know, there's influencers, collaborations, there's partnerships, there's lots of different ways it can look. And for us at the start, I didn't even know collaboration was a word. I just started doing it. And it was because I wanted to do things with other people. I wanted to share our products. I wanted to share our audience. And I, I wanted to bring something to people that I loved, that I knew that they would love. So I didn't even know that was collaborating. 
And someone came to me, um, it was actually Rosebud's Chillery, a local business, and she was like, could you make something leopard print? And I was like, yeah, yeah, I could. So I made the leopard print heart, which is now iconic for us. It's like our staple piece. And I made that to go with one of her key rings. We sold about 20 of them in a couple of hours. And from then it just, it just kept growing from there. And we, then we went to Zara Ceramics, Una Cookies, Dale Farm, White Chalk. There's been, I feel bad if I, if I miss anybody, but there's been so, so many, many amazing partnerships that we were able to do. And for us, it was about bringing two products together that we knew that everybody would get behind and love. And it doesn't always have to be, you know, with Zara Ceramics, she made a mug and I made a sweatshirt and we done that together. And then for the like of- So tell Rana, us about the, that, just focus on the Zara one. How do you make them sit in sync with each other? So the leopard print, so how did you make the Zara and the mug and the thing? What was that together? So the first thing we done together was the girl boss one. Okay. Uh, and then we done a baby it's cold outside. And then this year we done a gingerbread man. So I actually had went to Zara, I'd seen something she'd done. And I was like, wow, I love that pattern. It was like this little pattern and it was like green and peach and pink. And it was plain and I was like, could we put girl boss in the middle of that mug? And could I take that pattern? and make that into a stitching pattern and stitch it onto a jumper. And she was like, wow, that sounds like this could be great. And it was, we loved it and everybody loved it. They were so in demand. And I think that's when it all clicked that the collaboration thing was gonna work for us because anything that we'd done with somebody else like that, it sold out in minutes. I was sitting going, how, how has this sold out so quickly? You know, everybody really wanted it. And everything we seemed to do, you know, it went so fast. But, but, but we have to stop here. How does that magic happen? How did you get that to just, how does that work? Like I know there's businesses gonna be listening going, oh, like mine didn't sell out in minutes. Is there a build up? Is there yeah, a- I know. I'm it, making it sound very easy. And I know. so much. So I'm trying to, what I'm trying to do is if they're listening, I want people to go away from this and know how to do a collaboration as such. So yeah. first of all, it's about reaching out to someone that you align with. So that's what I can see, Rosewood Jewelry and you, you know, you both have the mums and all. So so first, is that would that be the first step you would say to the people who are listening, reach out to someone that aligns with you or? Yeah, I think you definitely have to have a relationship there. You know, when I say that Zara and I and Laura and I just got together, we didn't. We had a relationship there. We were building on it for a long time. You know, we were always swapping business tips and we were invested in each other. So mm -hmm. I think if you're looking for someone that would be a, a good partnership, it can't just be anyone. You need to have someone there that you have a rapport with, that you know you can work with, a connection with. You know, People know if it's not real. Mm -hmm. I would never put something out that I wasn't fully invested in because do you know, I'm, I wouldn't want to buy it. Mm -hmm. I need to have something that there's so much belief in. So I make it sound very easy that we just got two products, stuck them together and away we went. And you know, there is so much more, you know, there's so much more behind the scenes of relationship building, working on what we think, what we love, what other people would love and taking it from there. And then when it actually goes live, has there been a teaser process that gets everybody hyped? Like, how does that work? Yeah. So photography, talking about it. I do, I'm always very active on our Instagram stories. Mm -hmm. And Sarah always says, just to interrupt, we're working on this thing, <laughs> but we can't tell you what it is. And you're like, oh, I wonder what it is, I wonder what it is. And I see you do that really well, because we're all sitting waiting, and then when it goes, you're ready to rock to buy it. So that's definitely part of your strategy, right? A wee bit. Yeah, but you, yeah. it's not even like, I don't think I sit down and be like, this is a marketing strategy. I am such real life, like it, it is real. It's like, <gasps> I can't tell you. But, but it works, it's I, so good. Um, but it's, it's because it's so real, it's know. me, you know, and we're doing something at the minute with um, Oh So Femme and Little Penny Thoughts, Annette, and it's the same with them, you know, we're meeting up and it's like, <gasps> and it's so real, you know, I'm not going on going, I can't tell you because I want you all to be invested in no. me. I'm actually going on saying, oh, I really want to tell you, but I can't because but I guess we what have I'm to keep it. I know. What I'm trying to say is you're so personable that you've actually brought that excitement and that energy to your social, but you could stay off social and never tell us any of that but the fact you're coming on to tell us in the natural way and that you are excited we're excited with you so you've created that for us as well so I guess what I'm trying to say to businesses is if you're excited about something like you you know tell us so we can build up the hype because it works yeah. in a marketing way as well as being in a very genuine way so yeah. and, and, and you and for keeping good. us on the edge of our seats 
It is, it is, honestly, it is good. And I think that's the thing, you can't underestimate what you're doing. I was talking to somebody the other day in business and they were like, oh, sure, I have nothing interesting to tell anybody. And I was like, what? Sure, you're going to meetings. Mm -hmm. You're having coffee. <laughs> everybody tell loves it. a cup of coffee. Everybody needs to know about that. You're a working mum. Tell them how you're juggling that, you know. And I think everybody, you might underestimate what you have to give whenever you are coming to together with somebody you know you need to capture it all get it all and share it I think that's the whole thing when you're going out there and we're trying to like you say build that hype we have to want to share it mm -hmm. for other people to want to be interested absolutely and it definitely works just so you know we're always like oh my god I can't wait to see and then onto the website get it before it sells out so it's fantastic just your energy kind of goes through all your customers as well which is just gold really for your business but what is your most like proudest collaboration or I know you love them all but are you most successful collaboration do you want to give us a case study kind of yeah absolutely I think from all of them you know I'm ever the optimist there's always success in all of them and I hate to single out anyone because I've worked with the most amazing businesses I feel so grateful that you know anybody would want to come and work with us but for me Dale Farm Dale Farm asked Ken Stitch to make jumpers what like that just it just blew me away that you know there's so many companies out there that I thought were big business and they chose us so for me they're such a success story they're an iconic brand they came with their pear pick and porky and their chalk pop and they asked for samples and you know we nervously put out the samples and they loved them and they were like we want to release these and they had so much to give to us and we had so much to give back because I had everything you know we went for the Jill Brandon we went for the marketing and what tell me what you mean by that the jail brand and what does that mean for people who are listening so when we were putting things out you know they could have came and we could have just rocked off 100 sweaters and sent them to them to to dispatch okay but we didn't you know we done it together because i i knew that they had so much to give us and you know vice versa mm -hmm. so we were able to have everything that it was deal farm times ted and stitch yes oh so yes all so i remember packaging. seeing the graphics Ted and Stitch and their Farms logo were both on the graphics that went out and stuff so everybody knew it was yeah. a collaboration as such. Yeah, which was massive, you know, that they wanted to be associated. You know, they didn't just want to take it away and do it themselves. They wanted to do it for with us. So it was such a success. We sold hundreds of jumpers and it was amazing. One of our reels, we even got, you know, even the whole build-up of it all, Ashley from OsoFem, she came and she made reels for us and done photography. To get to do those type of things and to build up on that, one of those reels reached 37,000 people. Imagine 37,000 people standing, a footfall of that coming through your shop. Like, it's just incredible. So I think for me, it's such a success. It just, it went great. It was seamless. And we were able to deliver a product that everybody loved. And I think they will continue to, to keep loving. I love mine. I, I was Mr. Frosty and my boys all had, had them as well. So yes, I can... It was amazing to watch too. I could see that the energy behind it and the excitement too. And as you say, when a big brand like that comes to you, which you're equally as valuable as they are, but I mean, inside you're thinking, oh my God, I can't believe it. This so is me. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. It was unreal to watch it and it was really, really well done. The Dig podcast is all about educating my listeners, but it's so important to me that it is also a place to gain exposure. Each week, we open up the podcast to brands and business owners to pitch to you guys. My name is Louise Kahn, business owner of Benone Getaways. I am delighted to sponsor Series 4 of the Dig podcast and be featured as one of Caroline's guests. Benone Getaways is a luxury resort based on the Causeway Coast, walking distance from Benone Beach. It has spectacular views of Benevena Mountain and the hills of Donegal. We are open all year round for that perfect beachside escape. The resort consists of six unique luxury glamping pods and two self-catering holiday homes. Four of our pods come in their very own private hot tubs. All of our pods have personal fire pits and our guests can enjoy the amazing chill and grill barbecue hut. Take advantage of getting the family together or even a group of friends and book an unforgettable stay. Our resort is in the heart of Benone, close to an amazing activity centre, mini golf, surf school, walking distance from a bar and restaurant. Benone Getaways is a great base for exploring the north coast and visiting the top tourist attractions such as Mosadon Temple, Giants Causeway and many more. Just an hour's drive from us is both Belfast and Derry slash Londonderry. 
and we are only five minutes away from the Loch Foyle Ferry, the gateway to Inishone. After a long hard day exploring, pop up in a Prosecco and gather around the fire pit or soak in your very own private hot tub. Benoon getaways can cater for all occasions, including birthdays, anniversaries, hen parties and many more. Get in touch and create your very own tailor-made experience, which can make memories that last a lifetime. Start your giant adventure at Benoon Getaways. Find us on all the socials at Benoon Getaways or on our website www.benoongetaways.co.uk. Can you give any tips to businesses, Sarah, on like do's and don'ts for collaborations? Because there'll be people listening who have never done this before. So can you give us them any advice in that respect? The do's and don'ts. I do think you honestly have to be honest and you have to be invested in the other business that you're doing this with. You can't just go and say, they've got a massive following. I, I think if I can get in with them, we'll sell loads because chances are, you probably won't because there's not that connection there. There has to be a really good bond, a really good connection. You have to know what you're doing, plan it out, be strategic with your planning. You know, I make it sound here as if I am all excited and bubbly all the time and there's no planning. There is so much planning and behind it all and there's so, you have to be prepared to hit to put the work in. It's not just saying here, take this, market it to your followers and let's hope that they buy it. That's not what we do. We get together and we come up with something really special. So you really have to believe in what you're doing. Don't just go to someone and think, I could use you. Yes. I could use your audience. I could use your enthusiasm and I could go off and do my own thing because that's not sharing and that's not how it works. And people know, people mm. buy into real people. They're not gonna buy into something that you've just done to try and make a quick a quick turnaround on. Sometimes there'll be businesses listening that aren't product based and their head will be going a million miles an hour because they're like, oh, how can I do that? Because I don't have a jumper to team up with the cup to team up with that. So, you know, I, I when you're th talking there, I'm like, oh, you know, imagine a gym teaming up with, you know, another, you know, fitness uh, uh, group that they could come together and do your classes together to complement each other. So if there is businesses listening and you're not product based, this applies to all business landscapes, you can collaborate in so many different forms, can't you? The, absolutely, because, you know, I'm using an example here of product based. Uh -huh. You know, when I talk about the key rings and the Zara Ceramics or Una Cookies, the cookie, mm -hmm. you can use influencer collaboration. Yes. You know, you can go out there and collaborate with somebody who is an influencer and that is the same thing. You know, you are just bringing your skills together. It's there you not, go. It doesn't That's have a, to be yes. a product, just skills as well. You know, we've even done collabor collaborations like with Bruno Rafferty there. And it was our funny little slogans for Christmas. It was the pints jumper with the scarf and it was the bait that India apron. And the skill that Brona brought was her graphics. Yes. And the same with White Chalk the year before, you know, it was the graphics. So it doesn't always have to be a product. We can use influencer. It can look so different to everybody. I think it's finding your niche when you're looking for a collaboration and somebody to work with. Yes, definitely. And I suppose when I'm thinking about collaborations, just even for the Dig podcast, like I'm sitting here today and I'm wearing things from Stable Lane because they wanted to collaborate to get their product in front of my audience but I already buy from Stable Lane so it was a lovely when she you know when we decided to do it together it's like yes let's do this just like your energy and enthusiasm and I'm not another product based service if that makes or I'm not another product based business but it works that collaboration works so there are ways to do it you need to get creative and think outside the box I suppose I'm trying to think of ways to help the people that are listening that they can go ahead and do this too and it be successful in their business but collaboration can mean so many things you've just done it so well with product based that I just knew that it would be great for people to hear that how do you stand out Sarah amongst your competitors there are other embroidery businesses there are other people that do parts of the things that you do but you guys stand out how why do you think that is i honestly think it's because we graft so hard but as well as that we're so real you know mm -hmm. i'm so there and i think our success has been because i'm so it's a journey and i wanted everyone to come on this journey from rock bottom to you know a, a better a good place for us and it's been lovely bringing everybody with us and i think that's where this is, success has come is that everybody that listens and everybody that watches you know they are cheerleading us on what we do it's not a copy of somebody else's this is the original what everything that i do anything i go out and do i don't think oh i'm going to do that because 
I've seen her do that and that works. You know, there's no strategy here. I just do what I love and I, I hope that always comes across. You know, we've got a graphic designer, so when I think of something, I don't, I try so hard not to watch what other people are doing and, and stay in my own lane. And I think, right, what do I like? What would I like to show my customers? So we recreate things so they're completely different, so we're not mimicking somebody else's work. It happens a lot. And I think with success, when people see you're successful, they're like, that's easy, that's easy. I'm just gonna get a rainbow, stick it in a jumper and put it out there. So much more has went into that for me. You know, I sat with our graphic designer, we've worked through things. I put so much time and love and care and Paul stitched it and we've prepped it and packed it for you. It's so personal and that's what I love. I, I love being the person on the ground, getting to get to know our customers and properly connect with them. Yeah, and um, I, I had an expert on the podcast before and they talked about, you know, if you drew a line on all your competitors and all the different points in your business, like social media following, product delivery, this is what she said, and you drew your line and their line, if you are all on the same line for performance, you're not standing out. And but you're you you know you need to pick at some to make you stand out, and you stand out in so many different parts of it that you know I think it's a great example to other people to say right I'm going to really go hard on social media I'm going to make sure my product is amazing when it arrives through my door as yours always says I'm going to make sure people know my values on social so you have to stand out and I think that's why you stand out in social on um as a business against your competitors because I see all those things as a person Thank that you. watches and I think that's what's needed because it is a saturated market in every kind of sector There's so many people now so busy and everybody's so there doing their thing but you have to stand out and all those collaborations you do and, and everything that you do online definitely does that. So I think it's what's needed. What advice would you give to businesses, Sarah, who are maybe afraid to push forward with new ideas? Like you're always bringing new ideas to the, how do you do that without fear? Or is there always fear there? Or what, you know, what advice would you give to people who are thinking, oh, I'd love to try this, but I'm afraid. I decided a really long time ago when I was sad, Sarah, who couldn't get herself up in the morning and there was a dark cloud hanging over me that I was never going to say no to anything. I say, say yes. If you think you've an idea, you know, obviously everything in business needs proper planning, you know, plan it out, but don't overthink it. You know, if you have that plan and you think it's going to work, go and do it because you're only going to look back and say, well, if it didn't work oh, that didn't work, but I've learned. So now I'm going to push forward and I'm going to do this, 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 this. And if it did work, you'd be like, great, it worked. I took the jump. And I think it is, it's all about taking the jump. I'm never, I don't say, you know me, Caroline. I don't say no to anything. Yeah. You know, I always, it's about making it work. Try and make something work. Plan it out. If, it's go, if you think there's a chance, take that chance because I don't ever want to look back and say, should have done that. I don't think I can look back now and say, you know, so on our journey, oh, I should have done this at a different time. No, because I just done it. I just went there. I made it happen. And I think it's easy to say make things happen. But I okay, know, but you're very realistic. Like me and you've had this conversation before about all the disasters we've had too, of all the things we've done yeah. and they've went so wrong. And you know, like there's too many to start talking about in the podcast. But in business, that happens. But yeah. me and Sarah and I had this conversation actually just last week, and and then she said to me, but I learned this. I will never outsource to someone. I will never do, I will do everything myself now because I was stung that way, you know. Yeah. But that's the thing. And I talked about the time that I hadn't planned the route out when I was on an event management thing and I got caught up in a Belfast marathon. And now I'm telling you it's all the things that went wrong. <laughs> but I mean, that was a disaster for the business that I was in at the time. But I learned my lesson and that's just life. We're always going to have, you know, things that go wrong, but you have to learn, like you said. It's yeah. not easy, but it's the only way forward. Oh my God, you are juggling all of this and I watch it and I've worked with you in collaborations before and we've been on the Zoom at two in the morning and, and crying and <laughs> laughing and all of those things. But how do you do all this as a busy mummy with three boys who need you so much? Any wee tips there? I know oh. we're all in the same boat, but I mean, I love to hear what everybody else does to survive. I know that people listening to me and watching me will think, oh, she is so together. She knows what she's doing. I am a swan. You know, I am so grateful that on top, underneath, it is Laughing. going insane like it's going insane I am leaving that house I don't sweat the small stuff and I think that's my biggest key for any mum don't sweat the small stuff I've left this morning our beds are not made and breakfast is still sitting in the kitchen table I you know it's just getting by for me I'm do like, you ever wonder need... what if the window cleaner comes 
and 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 all them beds aren't made. I know he probably doesn't care, but I mean, I always think about the window cleaning. Yeah, I always think, well, then he'll know that I'm a bit of real life. Like yeah. I love being a bit of real life. It's not easy. And I think I know that in this past two years of starting Ted and Stitch, I went from being a mummy, just a, not just a mummy, but you know, I went from being mummy. That was my core job. And my goal was to, for survival for our family. And then now I'm, I feel like I'm a businesswoman. Like dare I say that I'm a businesswoman. And I think that the juggle there and trying to go from mummy to businesswoman has been so hard for me because I've missed so much. I've thought, I've, I have thought, oh gosh, I forgot about this. But you always get it done in the end. Yeah. So then I think to myself, it's just part of the mummy guilt. But what I, my biggest thing is that I don't let myself get caught up in the guilt, that I know mm. that I'm doing the best that I can do and trying to navigate a business and a family at the same time is gonna be hard, but we just have to pull in all our resources and just do what we can. I put the kids to bed at night and I start work again. I think that's part of, running a small business and a successful small business is I know it's not nine to five yeah and they need to know it's not nine to five too for you yeah. to get that guilt away don't you like I definitely something that's helped me and my guilt is talking to them about why I'm doing it and why I'm working so hard so if, if my boy said to me oh you're on your phone again which my phone is my work I'd say yes I know but this means that we get to do this or I get to spend more time with you at this time because I'm putting the extra time in now so I just think being vocal has helped me take that guilt away and um, but when my mummy says to me what way is your washing basket looking today and I'm like uh well I don't know where it is anymore because there's heaps around all sides of it I'm like oh my god am I a failure but as you say you just do what yeah. I think that's okay. I think that's okay. As long as what the is clean. Hands up, say that my washing basket is always overflowing and always. my kitchen sink is always got dishes in it. And I like it like that because I feel so grateful that I have three healthy, and that makes me the proudest mommy ever to say, I have three healthy boys. And I'm also able to provide for them and I'm doing something for myself now. So I'm not going to sweat the small stuff and I'm going to be okay with my dirty laundry basket as shameful as it sometimes makes us feel I'm it's real okay life mine. it's real life I'm okay with mine too you know sitting here in a big fancy hotel in Belfast but there's no washing done in the house but it's fine it's fine look we're just trying our best and as you say as long as our kids are you know happy and and healthy and all of that then we know we're you know that's really all that matters isn't it but Absolutely. thank you so much for being on the dig podcast the collaboration thing is definitely a new thing to businesses perhaps they've been doing it for years but it's never really had that word like you said you didn't really know what collaboration was but you were doing it without knowing and a lot of people are probably doing it but not making the most of it online really because if we're talking about online or even within our towns like I was when I had my bricks and mortar store I was always trying to get the businesses let's come together this Saturday and bring people into the town let's do something out in the streets ready to put me out of that time when I was in it but I mean that you know you can think outside the box not just about online but bricks and mortar how can you come together with the store next door and um, collaborate the word is collaborate right yeah. the word and you have to you have to want to share yeah I think that's the main part of it whoever you go in with and if you are wanting to approach someone, the two people need to want to share. You want you have to want to share your audience and a bit of yourself and your business for it to work. There you go. That's the, the ending quote. Thank you so much, Sarah. And um, yes, it's 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 just so lovely to have you here on the Dig Podcast. And you never know, you'll be back in series five. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you so, so much. much for having me. Thank you. Remember, if you do listen to an episode, screenshot it and share it on social. Remember to tag me so that I see it and I can reshare on my platform. I love to see everyone tuning in each week. It has been an honour to be your host. I look forward to our next episode.